Hey guys, the Calm Share. So this week we're actually gonna do a follow up on the deck tick I did a while back, um, Astral Druid. So a lot of people suggested in the uh, you know the comments and things like that that we should try a more astral focused version and just try to go off with Astral Communion. So we've uh, we've made a few minor changes. We've taken out all the keepers and the swipes. And we've put in some more cards to make Astral you know give us a higher win percentage after we've cast it. So we have two Grand Crusaders, they work sort of like Azor Drakes, it's a 6 mana 5-5, five five, so solid body, and it draws us a card basically. The card is random and it's possible we get like a secret or something, but you know, other than that, it is basically a big beater that draws us a card if mana isn't an issue, which hopefully in our case it's not. So we added those. We added Kel'Thuzad, because a lot of the time we have a lot of board advantage, but it's kind of hard maintaining it when we don't have a lot of cards in our hand and this gives us additional use out of all our creatures again if mana isn't an issue which it's not because we usually have 10 mana crystals finally we've added alexstrasza one problem this deck does have is even after we go off with astral if we have something like uh ysera or just something smaller we can get outraced by like combo druid or even a, a face hunter deck or something like that so alexstrasza both heals us and it also just um more importantly, is a very fast clock. If we Astral and like turn two or three, turn four, Alex draws with them. It's it's a lot of pressure. It's going to be hard for them to come back. But the deck is still played the same. You know, we always mulligan for Astral and Innervate, sometimes Wild Growth, and um, you know, it's still other than not being able to sometimes have a hybrid game plan of just being a normal old Druid deck. Although we're forced into that if we don't draw Astral, it's it still plays the same. So if you haven't already seen the uh, the other video series with the deck tech on TempoStorm.com and you like the sort of how the deck plays definitely check that out first i'll put a link to it in the description but for now we're just gonna play some more games of the deck um with those minor revisions that we made let's go ahead and jump into a game here and you know the deck is now a lot more focused on having to draw astral but it can still win games if we don't draw, you know, just we, we need some sort of accelerant, interview, wild growth, obviously Astral is the best one, but... Alright. Looks like we're playing against Paladin here. Probably Secrets Paladin. Alright, there's our Astral. So we're gonna mulligan these cards to look for Innervate. Wild growth doesn't actually accelerate us, since we have coin. Nope, we do have a Wrath here we can cast on turn 2 before turn 3 uh, Communion, which is nice. Can probably cycle it on like a 1-1. One, one. <sighs> Opponent just passed. Oh, alright. Let's go off. Always remember to Hero Power also after, after doing that. Uh, and now hopefully we can draw some uh, some big things. Well played. Hmm. Well played. Maybe we can get a concession. Our only dead draw now is Innervade, or I guess Wrath if he doesn't play a creature. But all right, Wrath's not dead now. Let's see what we got. Ooh, all right, it's a pretty solid one. All right. At this point, I think we win. Um, I don't think he can possibly even kill us with any combination of cards because even if he has equality, he need. Oh, if he has, uh, if he's playing Lights Justice or whatever. All right, Muster. Muster is fine. All right, what are we getting two of? Something cool, hopefully. Double Belcher. I like it. All right. I suspect this might be some sort of uh, mid-range paladin since this is the first thing they've cast. But even then, we had coins, so Quartermaster still two turns away, and we'll have time to clear these with like Belchers and Hero Powers. So we're gonna go face the Kermagus. So uh, this is pretty sweet. Good turn three here. Yeah, definitely looking like a more mid range paladin. Oh, that's kind of awkward now, but I guess let's draw three cards. <laughs> or six cards. Ooh, double Thorison. We are just doing all- oh god, I can't even play this. Well, we're gonna overdraw if we play the Harrison. Uh... I guess- I guess we're gonna have to burn some cards. Still probably worth it, but... We do get some, uh, sick Thoris in value here. 
Four. Wait, do we actually have 11 cards in our hand now? That's pretty cool. I didn't know that could happen. Oh no, this is 10, right? Alright, hold on. Oh, they're in two, so it should be easy to count. I'm just done. Six, eight, ten. Yeah, this is ten. Um, never mind. I'm just bad at math. That's cool, though. That this happened. I wonder if Chromagus... No, it's, a, it's, a, it's put a copy in your hand. It's just put it in your hand. It's the same way as, like, Antonidas wouldn't put a card in your hand. Okay, so, um, I guess we should play this so we can cast more things. Uh, yeah, I mean, we don't have, like, lethal. Even if, if we do this and get, like, a true silver, how much is that? That's 11. Yeah, it's not going to be lethal, so let's just play Thorison. We can clear some more stuff here. Uh, this is a lot of fun, but unfortunately I don't think we can avoid winning. Like, we, we could BM for a bunch of turns and make our whole hand cost zero, but I think our opponent's pretty done at this point. Ooh! Ooh, actually, now we get to make the game go longer. Alright. I'm excited for this now. We, we got what we wanted. So let's play another Thorison. And I guess let's play one of our four Grand Crusaders. What do we get? Ooh, Quartermaster. That's not particularly useful. I guess... Okay, there, there's a pretty good chance we get a... Uh, a muster for battle out of these three. Oh, so it's just like mid-range Secrets Paladin. That's reasonable, I suppose. So what do we want to do here? I mean, we do have to... Hmm. We could try to draw cards. We could actually... I like playing two Grand Crusaders in Hero Powering. Like, there's a pretty good chance we get, uh, like, uh, something to deal with this inequality or a um, Aldor Peacekeeper. Let's actually play this first, and it's gonna be a 5 1. Uh, Noble Sacrifice actually kinda does the job. We're also 28, so we shouldn't even be worried about this. Actually, shouldn't we just be looking for lethal? Like, drawing. I guess now we can't draw True Silver or something, but. Oh, uh, no, we wouldn't have lethal because he has noble sack up. All right, let's go ahead and actually play another one of these. Answer the call of the light. For no one. All right, let's just play some secrets. For the light. Now let's uh, double kill the noble sacrifice. I'm not actually sure this is uh, the right line. Like, there's a lot of cards in our hand, a lot of different things we can do. Let me attack the 2-1. Oh, my God, please. Thank you. Like, we could have drawn with this, looked for Druid of the Claw, Hero Powered Face to proc Noble Sacrifice, then maybe had Lethal. Uh, but Druid of the Claw costs 5. So Grand Crusader, get True Silver, Hero Power Face, and then go for it. Yeah, that might have actually been Lethal. But again, we didn't we didn't get there, so... Kind of unfortunate, but you know, stuff happens. Haha! Oh no. I guess it actually doesn't matter. The victory is Aww. <laughs> uh we might not actually Oh yeah, we definitely have lethal just boom hero power. Alright. So you know that game was uh that game was kinda sweet. Let's go ahead and jump into another one here. <laughs> 